So, I'm gonna sign in as well. Ooh, I got a very ugly color today. Or not ugly, just like a muted purple. Meh. Um, cool, cool. So, uh, today's study group call picks up on two months ago of our last study group call, I think was in um, May, because we skipped June. Um, and the theme for today is related to lesson planning. I noticed a lot of people, or not a lot of people, but a few people will propose lessons in the lessons repo for study groups. And I thought we'd talk a little bit about how to contribute back lessons and how to write your own lessons and how to use our lesson tools to kind of inspire your future curriculum for your study group. Um, so, oh, it says science fair on line 73 of interest on the internet this month. Feel free to add any links or cool things that you've come across. Um, it's a great opportunity to share stuff that you otherwise found on Twitter or in other venues with the rest of the study group lead community. Oh, and I didn't introduce myself. My name is Aurelia. Um, I work at the science lab. Uh, we are three people. It's, it's a pretty small operation at Mozilla, but we support scientists who want to open source their research. And if you've never been in Etherpad before, um, the Etherpad is attached to the event uh, invite on our website at science.mozilla.org. And I can also put it in the chat for the video room, which is the software that you're using currently to view me and listen to me talk and hopefully listen to other people talk soon. It won't all just be me the whole time, I promise. Um, but uh, two things to note about Etherpad. You can sign in on the roll call below line 57 with your name, affiliation, and Twitter. And that's usually just helpful so that people know what colors correspond to which writers and who to follow up with if they want to uh, follow up on a question or on a link that was shared. There's also an area in the upper right corner uh, that you'll notice that has little color blocks and names. And right now, all I see is my name next to the muted purple pukey kind of purple color. Um, but there are a bunch of unnamed people underneath that with colors. So I would really love the unnamed people to put their, um, their names, uh, their names there. That would be wonderful. Uh, so great, sign in and put your name in the upper right. And um, now we'll just continue with the regular agenda. So um, welcoming new contributors. We always do this at the beginning of our calls to say, welcome, we hope you enjoy the call. Um, it usually goes for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how many people attend and how many questions there are, um, but it's not a fixed um, high pressure time, uh, so you can drop off if you need to uh, for other things. But Marina, hello. You're joining us from the Max Planck Institute for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences. Yay! And you're building uh, a study group uh, in Leipzig. That's really cool. Thank you. Welcome. Um, oh, and Blake. Blake Joyce. Cyphers, oh rad, sweet. I'll just let you type, I won't narrate your typing. Um, so usually how these calls work is uh, we have this theme um, that changes every time. It's not as, um, I guess, as uh, disciplinary focused as our themes for our community calls, which are other calls that we run bi-monthly. The study group calls are usually just a chance for other study group leads to network and share resources about how they're running their study groups and what are particular challenge points. And then the theme usually guides the links that we share toward the end of the call, which are other resources you can use to build lesson plans or build community or um, sometimes develop curriculum for a particular uh, language. So R, we've had um, study group calls focused on R, we've had ones focused on um, Jupyter Notebooks, we've had ones uh, focused on uh, BioJulia and um, like uh, languages that are applied to particular disciplines um, and developing curriculum for those. So it runs the gamut. Um, oh, yay, Blake is joining from the Research Bazaar is on. Yay, yes, yes, I see that you're in the video chat. Great. Um, cool. So we're going to, I don't know if Madeline can join. Madeline runs the U of T coders on line 102. Oh, yay, Madeline, you're there. Good. Um, can you give us an update on your study group?
Yeah, so I kind of think of the geometry lesson that you'd like to cover for today. So we have on our uh, GitHub pages like a list of all the, the lessons that we've done, which links to the GitHub repo itself. So if, if, if that's also there. Um, and we on the exec team are thinking a lot about lesson development because we're going to be implementing Kripsi Bala's uh, least reversible quantitative methods course in the fall. Um, specifically for the ecology department here at U of T. So this is like the first time most of us are teaching an actual course and we're thinking a lot about how to make this be enough of an ecology course but still mostly live coding and things like that. So that's really uh, yeah. Alrighty, awesome. So glad to, to, un to hear that you're going to re-implement uh, Christie's course. Uh, that's great. She did a lot of work on that during her fellowship to kind of strip out the ecology references because when she ran it as a pilot with her students, it was for um, entomology and ecology. And she wanted to make it a bit more anonymous and uh, approachable for everyone. So she wrote this really cool instructor guide and stuff. So thanks for sharing those resources, Madeline. Um, looks like a lot of folks are out, but next up, I don't know if Danielle's on the call, if she could join. I don't see her in the link. Maybe she has a conflicting meeting. But she runs the Oregon Health and Science University Biodata Club, which is on line 127 currently. Um, and she added some R boot camp resources. Um, so if you have any others to share with her, I'm sure she'd love to, to read them afterwards when she checks back on the pad. Um, and I don't know... Uh, Sarah, Sarah, are you on the call? Someone just unmuted, so maybe. Or maybe not. Ne never mind. <laughs> um, also, I, I, I wanted to call out that um, anybody who is on the call but doesn't have an area to give an update on their study group or what they're interested in running, Feel free to add um, your study group name and your name under line 192 and type a quick update or any questions you have and we'll address them as we go through the pad. I usually just leave space for all the study groups who have attended in the past and if they can attend, they join with notes, but if they can't, um, they don't. And um, so feel free to add yours if you're not listed. Don't feel like this is a closed call because of all of the names that were already listed. Um, cool. So uh, the Computational Biology, Ecology, and Evolution group at UW-Madison, which is Sarah's group, uh, gave some updates. They're kind of on a hi hiatus for the summer on line 152. Um, and Vicky is not on the call either, but he also gave an update. He runs uh, the IoT study group um, in India that's listed on line 165. He's also contributing to the decentralization floor at MozFest this year. So um, for all of you who are interested in proposing a session at MozFest, it's kind of our big festival for the open internet that happens at the end of October. Um, you should totally apply. There are five spaces you can apply to have sessions in. Um, if you apply for open innovation, which is my floor, um, I get to approve those sessions. So. Uh, so you should apply <laughs> and mention that you know me because then maybe I'll prefer your sessions. And then Vicky also runs the decentralization floor. So if you're interested in submitting anything on that, um, he's super friendly. Um, oh, Marcos, you're up next, 179. What can you tell us about your study group? Hi, there. Hey. Um, well, right now we are testing to uh, use Yaku because that the end of the school semester gives a lot of activities and a lot of stuff going on and then a small reset. Um, we are now focusing on learning Python and the plan for the next meeting is to try to work on small programming challenge. So we want to try to tackle some Prepare the challenge before the meeting and then share results and problems and stuff like that. But other than that, there's no real update right now because we have to, to start our meetings again. So that's it. Thanks, Marcos. That's great. Um, I think uh, before we go to you, Francesca, we're going to jump back up because Tom joined. Tom, do you want to give a, to give us an update on your study group? Yes, sorry, I was a little late. Um, if, if someone here 
All right, sweet. And for everybody, does everyone know what the Working Open Workshop is? I'm not sure everyone on the call does. It's a, it's a workshop that we run um, semi-annually, I guess, uh, at the Science Lab with other partners all over the world. And um, Evo and a few other people on this call have attended Working Open Workshops in the past. Um, we teach people about just basic principles of, of Working Open and how to set up nice readmes and documentation for your projects and how to appropriately open source things and openly license them and open access publish and we have modules for all different components of that so we'll be giving you updates on the future study group calls too. I think the next study group call happens just before the Boston WOW, right Tom? I think Boston WOW is the third to the fourth? Correct. All right, sweet. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we'll take a lot of pictures. We'll be tweeting them. It'll be very exciting. Um, and the website is super rad. I, I forgot what color. Oh, it's green. I think it's green. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Cool, cool. Francesca, would you like to give us an update on your study group? to kind of understand more people what we're interested in. So I basically uh, forced volunteers, a couple of people, to give presentations about something that they would like to um, run a tutorial on. And uh, then I basically did a few Google polls to see uh, and sent them around to see when people wanted to see that tutorial. And that worked out pretty well, I think, because the next uh, three tutorials that we run were very successful, there was a lot of people, so I think we're going to do that again. And so we run a tutorial making R packages and one an introduction to R markdown. Uh, and then on Monday we're going to have the first session of our journal club and we're going to discuss um, about advantages of uh, sharing, sharing data and open data. So that's going to be very interesting. Uh, hopefully people will show up and that will give me a good idea of what people think are the, the, the biggest challenges to, uh, to sharing data. Um, after that, um, yeah, we have a tutorial in Djibouti scheduled for the, the week after. And, and so we, we have, we've got a little bit of a problem uh, because at the moment we always meet on Mondays after 5 p.m., which is the time that, is, that suits most students. Uh, but a lot of people have complained because they've got small children and they have to go home at five. So I'm trying to fix that problem, but I'm not really sure how to do that. So if anyone has had the same problem and you have any suggestions, that would be great. Um, and also something that is not in the other part, I would really like to organize a big two or three day workshop on uh, doing spatial analysis in R, because that's uh, the kind of thing that people tend to use normal open source software for. So I would love to do that, but I'm not an expert on it, so I'm trying to kind of uh, gather experts in spatial analysis and, R and organize that probably for November or December, and the next, next Saturday is here anyway, because now everybody's on hold. Um, yeah, that's me. Oh yeah, Blake, you're muted, but yeah. <laughs> yes, yes.
For the spatial analysis stuff, we've been working on some stuff, but especially in Python, um, I found something that can be a little bit of a side note, but I found a lot of the R code for open practices for doing GIS stuff um, to be kind of slow. I think that if I have really high end computation, that for visualization is kind of slow. I don't want to deter you from. Yeah, I would totally plus one the Python, and also JavaScript is pretty great for spatial analysis, so there's a lot, a lot of cool libraries for that, especially for web maps and stuff. So uh, if you ever need any help on that, I have like a lot of resources. It's what I used to do all the time. I'm like a huge geo nerd, so I can send you like all the stuff, probably not our stuff, but otherwise. And sorry, Blake, I interrupted you because I was like so excited, so carry on. <laughs> All right, sweet. Sorry, can I ask whether anybody has tried lunchtime lately? Yes, I, I, I was. Um, our group is only around this So, so we can go to the lunchtime meeting. Yeah, so yeah, that's nice. Um, I'm wondering, too, uh, how many people run groups in a university context where people are kind of contained on the same campus? Um, if you can you just raise your hand if you're on the video? Is it you know, everybody's, whoa, okay, never mind. Super easy. So that would make sense to me to have a lunchtime meeting because people could kind of get across campus fairly easily maybe if they didn't have conflicting courses. I think it might be hard if you're doing a study group that's like, um, I know, for example, Danielle's OHSU study group is university-based, but she tends to call in people from lots of different um, surrounding places, too. So those people can only really make the meetings in the evenings or maybe super early morning. Thanks. Um, I ended up doing two surveys with the majority, but I feel like you still end up with a certain people who are just scared to end up on the other side. So, yeah, let me know who I go to. I'm curious if you get the same. Cool. Um, so, Blake or any of our new folks, Marina, do you guys want to tell us a little bit about your organizations and groups and, and what you're up to? Maybe Blake can go first. Um. moved out into helping all life sciences and in two or three of the most um, so uh, Julian and I um, as well as Heather um, and uh, Andrina and a few others um, started a local chapter of the group that 
got started in Melbourne and uh, Australia, and they are involved in weekly events uh, as they're training scientists on how to use computation for their anti protein analyses, but also how to use it in a reasonable way um, and how to repeat you know, basic science and, and have ways of you know, repeating bioinformatic analyses. Um, and so for a long time, learning how to use computation for biology or for life science. Getting people to be very comfortable with uh, leveraging larger cities, uh, designing platforms so that they can support their own communities, their scientific communities, um, and really kind of getting people up to that adaptable from simple user of computation to developer and supporter of the community so that they can support other people. That's why we got started in our work. I have a kind of a long um, history of education going on. Um, and so now I've really started with bio. And what we found is that when people are first getting started, for them to actually use their skills, really get in and start to develop, and become confident and very comfortable in using different kinds of keys, they really need some place where they feel A, safe. Um, so we, we work really hard. Awesome. Thank you for the update. And thank you for taking notes, Madeline. You're awesome. Um, I think it was Madeline. Okay, cool. Yeah, thumbs up. Um, Marina, do you want to give us a little update on your study group and how things are going? Oh, you're muted. Institute since 
2014 <laughs> and we've conducted a few open science events and now I want to, um, instead of using multiple mailing lists to manage all this, I would like to use a study group to make a um, um, central platform for this open science network that we've already built in Leipzig. Um, within three Max Planck institutes and also the University of Leipzig and also some other folks who are coming um, from nearby cities and um, have just a central resource where we can manage all the events and also um, take videos of those events and upload them on YouTube <laughs> so that they are not lost. <laughs> open com satellite event um, and we will probably also do this year an open com satellite event. Yeah. So I'm new to study groups <laughs> and I try to learn all about it to use it. Awesome. Thank you for joining. We're very excited to have you. Um, I also want to skip back up to Elizabeth, you're on the call. You're filling in for um, for Sarah, and I'm sorry I skipped over you. I didn't see your update in the newcomers, but if you'd like to talk about your study group, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, so can everybody hear me? Okay, so my name is Elizabeth. Um, I'm a first year graduate student in the microbiology, microbiology department at UW Madison. Um, earlier in the spring, um, I'm taking over the co chair position at Combi, the computational biology evolution and ecology group um, from Sarah, who is normally on these calls. Um, she's on a plane on the way to a conference right now, so I'm filling in slash over time as she gets ready to graduate pretty soon. Hopefully I'll be um, ready to take her place on these calls. Um, so yeah, I'm new to the open science world, um, just trying to learn as much as I can, get my feet wet. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. It's great. We're looking forward to your new website. I've heard a lot about it. Um, you're evolving the original website to be more custom and cool, so that's always supported. Um, cool. So I think we went through everybody. Did anyone not get a chance? Ivo, did you want to say something about your study group? Oh, I think you're muted, but feel free to unmute and give us an update. Oh, maybe I... Okay, I think you should be able to talk now. Okay, can you hear it now, everyone? Yes. All right, that's good. Yeah, so, um, yes, I'm a PhD student here. Um, my second year, and yeah, we are running a study group here in the University of Denver, South Africa. And it's quite new, it's my first time on, on the, in the fall as well. We've been running workshops on, on, on the software and data potential platforms, also our non structural on the software and data potential. Um, so, yeah, we've been going on with this workshop, and you know, we came to a point where there was a lot of interest in people getting help and, and, and things on their research. And so, I, I actually thought that uh, the study group was the right way to go through. Unfortunately, I also came across the uh, uh, data science and working, op working open uh, <laughs> line of doing things, and it suited perfectly well with, with what we were doing. So, after attending the, the mini while, we kind of um, streamlined now our activities on, on open data and the digital research. So, so we, uh, we meet um, fortnightly. Before it's during lunch time, and the good thing is we all based on, on the same campus, so it's easier for us to to be during lunch time. But not everyone happens to come on every all 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 the meetings. We do have a quite good representation in the field. Yeah, um, I'm also part of uh, a volunteering group. Uh, it's called the Young Water Project. And we recently um, organized an open event. Um, the 
next one is also going to be next week Friday and I, I, I suggested to you to, to run the mini wow as well. Uh, so, so that's what's going to happen next week and I'm hoping to, to share that with you. Great. Awesome. Thank you for those updates. That's really cool. Um, great. So uh, I think we got through everybody's update. Did anyone not get a chance to speak that wanted to speak? No? We're all good? Um, cool. So there's a bunch of links um, related to the today's theme on, um, on curriculum development and lessons. I think we usually point people, especially in the study group orientation guide, we point people to the lessons repository and uh, we use a combination of sub-module lessons. So those are GitHub repos that we've kind of um, absorbed into a main lessons repo under Mozilla Science. And then we also, in the issues queue for that same repository, have a bunch of lessons that we've labeled according to the themes, so like Git, or R or Python or open science or whatever. We apply these labels to those lessons and those are usually community submitted lessons. Um, so the core curriculum, uh, some of which needs to be updated is sub-moduled in that repository and the issues queue has a lot of community contributed lessons of similar topics or different topics, but um, that have been tested by different study groups all over. Um, so those are always resources. And I put the study group orientation guide in the lessons repo on line 229 and 230. Um, and then there's a special module uh, that's animated about um, open source curriculum development uh, on line 231 in the study group orientation that I called out. Um, and I really like the Khan Academy philosophy for programming education. I don't know if it necessarily overlaps, you know, too substantially with software carpentry and other things, but I liked their outline for why they develop curriculum the way that they do and what their general philosophy is, so I put that in line 232. And then um, all of the other sections from line 235 to 267 are lots of different um, alternatives to curriculum that we offer. So um, some open courseware by different universities, some weird interactive games, some quizzes, um, and then some curriculum tooling too. So if you want to make your own curriculum and you don't want to necessarily use the same format or just a, um, a, like a markdown file like what we usually provide for our lessons repo lessons, um, you can make a Git book, you can try using the Pandoc Bookmaker template that I linked to on line 256. There's this another cool thing called Live Slides that lets you um, embed and in some cases unpack websites and how they're constructed in Keynote and PowerPoint presentations, which can be useful if you're not making um, online guides, but instead of doing lessons in, in Keynote and PowerPoint. Um, and uh, sometimes too, at least for Girl Develop It stuff, we have a weekly meetup or bi-weekly meetups called Code and Coffee, and those are kind of like hacky hours. People just show up and they work together, and we don't necessarily have an agenda or a guest speaker, um, but I usually have a list of a bunch of interactive games and online challenges for different languages so that people can do those together while sitting next to each other, and so I put a bunch of those resources in this list. Um, so I hope that's helpful. But, oh yes, Blake, question. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but um, I'm, I'm, thank you first for making this list. I'm not to you on this, but so we've been for about we've been together. Cyber has been here for about eight years, and we've noticed that documentation is really, really not the way to go to teach people how to do things. Um, you know, it's better for reference material, or whatever. So we've started to change our mind uh, about how we do the education the training to more of like pragmatic kind of hands-on modules, that's what you're talking about. Um, and putting those onto GitHub repos or putting them into software carpentry or data carpentry some. Um, I've never heard of Khan Academy, but I'm really excited to check that out. But is there a way uh, that, that you were saying that um, there are public groups that submit to these repositories that you guys have that have modules? Um, how, how do I go about doing that or how do I propose? Um, you know, because like one of the things I'm working on right now is how, as a you know, as a life scientist, that kind of training background, how do I take something, containerize it, move it from my local computer to cloud, and maybe cloud to an HPC? And 
I think that a lot of people would be interested in it. I just don't know where I can put that, where people would see that and use it. I'm struggling to make it very generalized uh, for academic things. But, uh, yeah, so I'm curious if there's a way to admit you guys. Yeah, totes. If everybody wants to go check out line 230 with the study group lessons repo, I'll walk us through how it's set up and how you can contribute to. There might actually be a module in the study group orientation guide that tells you how to contribute a lesson, but, um, but in any case, we can walk through it here. And I'm also recording the call, so there will be video evidence of me going through the website. So if we click on that website, it's a, it's a GitHub repo, and you can see that there's a bunch of folders and directories and the double folder directory in GitHub usually means that it's sub-moduled. So that means that somebody else made a repo and I've just captured that repo at a certain commit which is listed next to the repo name and put it inside of my repo. Um, and then there's like a little readme that tells you, um, gives you some basic outlines of what are study group lessons like, what are kind of formats that we support. Um, and then some contribution guidelines. So there's some instructions for how to submit a submodule as a pull request. I would say don't bother <laughs> because it is kind of a nightmarish process if you don't know what you're doing. And sometimes it can be stressful because you think you're going to mess something up. I even struggle with submodules and they are actually difficult to update sometimes. Um, so they'll be fixed at a certain commit and then somebody at that repo will change the lesson or update it. And I'd have to fetch those updates it's just a, it's a bit of a, a jumble. But the easiest way to contribute a lesson is to go to the Issues tab, which is at the top next to the Code tab. And you can see there's a list of a bunch of different issues. Um, we have a series of labels um, that include both the, the um, uh, I guess, the level of the curriculum that's being offered, so advanced, beginner, intermediate, and the specific topics of, of the curriculum. Um, we don't have a Docker or container um, related tab, but I can add one as a label. And we did actually have a study group call um, a few months ago focused on Docker and containers. Um, and, um, and Tim Head spoke on that about Everywhere, which is a project that's supported through the Global Sprint. And um, there was a fellow from Docker too who contributed some lessons and things. So I'll pull up that etherpad and put it in this etherpad. And then I will add a label for containers in Docker. But you can kind of see what people have submitted. We have a lesson template. So that means that when you create an issue, which everyone can do, in this repository, it should give you guidelines in uh, comments for how to fill out the lesson template. Um, but it's pretty open. It's not going to reject your submission if you don't follow the guidelines, although we love people who follow standards. Standards are great. So much easier to parse. Yay. Um, so feel free to, to, add, to look through to search for topics that you think might be interesting or that you think your lesson might cover just to make sure that you're not duping. Um, some people also just do translations. There's an introduction to Docker um, that's already in there that Bill wrote a while ago, but it could probably be updated to a different use case or circumstance. Um, or like I said, languages are always welcome too. So that's kind of how we, we accept submissions so far, but I'm totally open to people suggesting other ways if you think that there are better ones. Also, I didn't mean for the list to look super intimidating. I, I just wanted to provide a lot of resources, so I hope people can submit other lesson ideas. You should just add links to the list under line 233. I'm sure there are way better, and to Blake's point about you know, learning while doing instead of just following some curriculum that's wrote, there's a lot of um, interactive uh, like um, activities and academies online that teach you these things that I listed under, particularly under the tools section and under the podcast social groups and uh, games section. There's like a lot of really cool, uh, weird games you can play to learn programming concepts. Thank you, I really appreciate that. And I'll, I'll just note for Elizabeth, because I think you are where I was just a few years ago. Um, those interactive uh, coding things are really helpful, uh, for, especially with people who have no background in uh, coding. Coming from the life sciences, that's pretty normal for us. There's also a tweet that I put um, just as like a confidence booster around line 273 
um, where somebody had asked the question, how do you succeed as a self-taught developer? And then this guy gave some bullet points about how to succeed. And one of the chief things he mentions is contributing to open source projects. So by contributing to the study group lessons repo, shameless plug here, um, <laughs> you're contributing to an open source project and you're building skills in coding, yay. Um, there's also this cool tool on line 274 called Contributor Ninja that sorts a bunch of different issues based on preferences in um, or open issues in open source repositories. So you can jump in and contribute to them. Sometimes people just want like proofreading and stuff that's fairly easy to do without much coding background. But any way you can build your chops by contributing to actual projects is probably a really cool way. You can even have like a mini global sprint hackathon as part of your study group where you all just work on open source project contributions. That's an option too. Cool, cool. Does anyone have any other updates or things to add? Nope. Um, sorry, I don't know how to suggest something. So, uh, as Sarah has mentioned, we're trying to go from Google Sites to GitHub organization and uh, GitHub pages. And what we've done um, with our GitHub organization, I'll pop the, an example into the ether pad real quick. So you can find it. So on online, where are we keeping the notes? I guess I'll just pop it up in our updates. So online, 159, I've popped a link into our, uh, our study group uh, repo. So our basic organization is so somebody in our biostatistics department has uh, agreed to teach our study group next semester. And what he's doing is he's trying to design an R for data sciences course to teach in fall 2018. So he's using our study group as kind of a practice, trying to try out some of his lessons. So what we're doing is at, our, at the base of our organization is we have R study group, Python study group, uh, repos uh, where we'll have, where we will have the lessons in them that will somehow link to the website. We haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but Brian Candle is the biostatistician, and basically in the fall we have um, he's created some lessons um, based off of other people. So Jenny Bryan, he's uh, based it off of what she taught before. Um, so there might be some ideas in there, we're we'll actually working with him, so his, and he teaches the course in fall 2018, um, it's more organized. Also, if anybody has any suggestions for just organizing the lesson, pl lesson plans, like if it goes into their own repos, how to link them to the website, um, like I said, where just now starting to transition to uh, GitHub pages. So we have like our base page, like welcome to our website type thing, but we're still working on um, how to best organize, like our, we do our study group and Python study group, how to best link um, like lessons to the website so it's all organized and whatnot. I know Madeline, I think you put a, a lessons repo inside of your own study group, right? And then you just link out to the lessons and the issues related to the postings? Yeah. So on uh, 107, we have just like an extra page that's, yeah, a, a web version of what's in our repo already. Cool, and usually, so for the study groups repo that, um, that folks fork, and feel free to, um, to take a look at that. I'll put, I think it's actually linked to um, online, yeah, the study group repo is online uh, 231. Then you can look at it as an example, Elizabeth. You always don't have to copy the theme or anything, but um, the workflow is kind of explained for how to create events using GitHub issues and the post directory. Um, it's a Jekyll blog, so it has like a blog post directory, but we use the blog post as event postings. And um, we usually link to an issue related to the theme of whatever the session is. And you can put whatever you want in that issue, including a link to curriculum or a link to slides. Um, and some of the stuff looks a little um, uh, 
programmy and not as pretty because it links back to GitHub. So it destroys the mirage of seeing this cool website. And then you go to GitHub and you're like, whoa, what? <laughs> you just linked to GitHub. That's too lame and codery. But, um, but it also makes you look hardcore uh, when you're going to the study group website and you're like, whoa, I just got redirected to GitHub. I bet all the people in the library who are looking over my shoulder think that I'm smart. And stuff. I don't know if that's actually what they say. But um, anyway, <laughs> so you can follow that model if you want. And if you need any help with your website, I love making websites and I don't get to do that much. So um, if you want any like tips or CSS fanciness or whatever, I'm happy to help. Um, or if anybody else has suggestions for how to link to lessons, please provide them. I think I copied shamelessly from Matlin website and but that broke a couple of things on the website but I don't really care because the lessons are there and that's the most important thing. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna broke things so glad that you hear. So I didn't make this myself. I actually don't know how to do it but somebody in our group might know. And we I think if it's like in markdown you can actually have the lesson entirely show up on the website. So some of them are just like the intro header stuff and then you have to go to the GitHub to actually see it. But for a lot of them I'll just link one example since we were talking about mapping earlier. Um, I'll put it in the chat of the ether Yeah, so the whole thing is really just on there. Awesome, thank you. Um, also, uh, Blake, I put the link to the Docker and Container Study Group call on line 250. And I believe on our, our on our study group YouTube channel, which I know everybody checks all the time because they're like, when is the next video coming out? I have no idea. But <laughs> so we have a YouTube channel where we upload these calls and there's actually a recording, I think, of the session. So if the links aren't enough or if you feel like you'd like more, feel free to check out the YouTube channel. I tweet the bejesus out of it after every one of these calls and I hope people actually look at them. But um, yeah, Align 250 is where I link to it. Um, cool. So I don't think there are many other updates. Um, we have uh, a newsletter that's bi-monthly now. We do it every two months. So this month we're talking to Mark, um, who runs a study group in the Netherlands, which is very cool. And Mark and Matus, they both have M names, so they alliterate. And I hope I'm going to put in a lot of puns, alliteration puns in their blog post. Um, but we'll be featuring them in the newsletter this month. And if you'd like to sign up for the newsletter, please put your name under line 312. Um, our next call will be August 4th. Uh, if anybody else wants to MC, I know I kind of like dominate the calls and I don't mean to. I hope it, my voice isn't annoying. Um, but if it is, sign up to MC because there's no easier way to shut me up than to volunteer to do free work. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So please feel free to sign up under line 335. Um, and that's, that's all we got for this. Uh, oh, oh, another exciting update is that we have a wonderful GSOC student, Google Summer of Code student, who's working on um, developing a dashboard of study group stats so that we'll have like this really pretty place to see how many countries participate in study groups and how often they hold events and um, that kind of thing. So I'll let you know when we have a prototype of that that you can all test and let us know what you'd like to learn about other worldwide study groups or how you'd like to connect with them. Um, yep, that's all I got. We can close the call unless anyone has any announcements. Alrighty. Great talking with you all. Bye. Thanks for coming.